After weeks of driving south, we have finally made it to a point where we can slow down and take in all the beautiful scenery around us. There's no doubt that being on the move all the time can be exhausting. I think it's really important to listen to your body when you need to slow down, even if you aren't on the road. It's been easy for me to forget this because I have a goal of getting somewhere sunnier and warmer for the winter. Then I remember, what is the point of doing all this driving if you don't enjoy the journey as you go? The Canadian Rockies are a place where the mountains tower over you and the roads are so steep you can't believe it's even possible they exist. I'm excited to show you around a bit in the coming weeks. Canada has been treating us very well. Hey y'all and goodest morning to everybody. It's a beautiful winter day here in between the Purcells and the Rocky Mountains, the Canadian Rocky Mountains. I made it. <laughs> it has been kind of a wild two weeks. When I last left you guys, I was on my way to the ice fields after spending the night at a Walmart in Hinton, Alberta, Canada. I'm gonna back it up a little bit and tell you guys about my wonderful but also kind of stressful journey from the Yukon all the way down here to Southern BC. So a couple of weeks ago, I met up with my friend Angie and her friend Jackie in Whitehorse. My friend Angie also has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna plug it. Here's the card to her channel. You should check her out. She's awesome. We decided to team up and drive part of the Alaska Highway together uh, through the Northern Rockies. First I had to wash my car, it was pretty bad. So I learned recently that it's really important to get all of the mud off of your rig often because it can mess with your ABS and get stuck in things like your U joints. And a little foreshadowing, I learned this lesson the hard way later on in this video. She hopped in her Tacoma, I hopped in the Jeep, and we got on the road. Yeehaw, you ready to go? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, um, you want me to take the lead? Yes, you know the territory. <laughs> All right, I'm an experienced Yukoner now, I guess. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll start driving. I'm so glad that I drove this section of the road with Angie because we ended up driving at night one of the nights and it was really scary because it was really foggy. I couldn't see like maybe even six feet in front of me and I was in the front and it was really scary. That's my visibility right now. Remind me to freaking never, ever, ever. <laughs> <laughs> drive at night. I'm so lucky I'm with Angie, guys. <laughs> it's so bright. The truckers just swing by like it's nothing. I can't see hardly anything. Can't see the lines. Nothing. I was happy that we were caravanning. I was not alone having to go through this. So then the next day, we stopped at the signpost forest. <laughs> uh, William's having a walk. Jackie's walking William. <laughs> oh, he's like, I just want to say hi to her. I didn't want her to take me. He's like, I didn't need to be with you. Yeah, I just wanted to wait. Her heart is city. There's a lot of Nevada. Yeah. We are at the signpost making an obligatory stop before we head out to the hot spring. It, this place, okay, so the way people make it seem on social media, it doesn't seem this big. It's like way bigger than you would think. Definitely a good spot to stop, take a little walk. Oh, cause last night's drive was rough. Like I'm telling you guys, this place is packed. I think it's kind of obligatory that you stop there when you are overlanding through this part of Canada. So we stopped there and then we headed to the Liard Hot Springs. I think I'm saying that right, Liard. All right, we've made it to Liard, Liard, I don't know how to pronounce it, Hot Springs. We got our bathing suits after having a search for them. And yeah, look at this really intense electric fence. I can't tell if the bear, what side the bears are on, so I'm bringing my bear spray. You never know. Gotta protect the group. <laughs> it's pretty dead out here, so you never know. And yeah, look at that. That's intense. Thanks to everyone who has recommended this spot. Look at camera. Look at camera. Look at camera. camera. Right here. Really hot. Hello! It's so nice. Wow, this is the best spot 
ever. <laughs> Best hot spring I think I've ever been to. <laughs> this is really nice. Super I'm nice. enjoying this a whole lot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Very good. <laughs> Right. It's a loud environment. My watch warned me. It's a loud environment. This water is cold. Go on a road trip with a couple of bottles. That's what I just said. <laughs> this is what happens. What do you what you do that week? Well, we're on a road trip with a couple of bloggers. <laughs> I was like, my hands were so, like, I was definitely white knuckling it, and I was like on the steering wheel like this. Well, you were, time. but she was like way ahead of us. I was like, yay, she like, you were gone. Like, oh. I could see your lights, and I was but like, what oh. about the one where you couldn't tell you were supposed to turn? Oh, because. Oh, yeah, I saw, yeah. This is mm -hmm. like dirt on the road. I'm like, we're so oh, yeah. And there's I know, I was right like, there. we're gonna die. But you had a curve, yeah. and it was like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, there was one spot too. Yeah. And then they had to, there was a freaking construction yeah. obstacle. Yeah. I was just like, yeah, I like can't do this. I can see like six feet it. in front of me. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna die today. Like, <laughs> the scary roads and I yeah. know, the animals. Yeah. It's gonna start snowing. Like, this is the last little opening, I feel like, before yeah. it would be even. Could you imagine if we had to do that in the snow? I would have pulled over. <laughs> But then I would be afraid to pull over because this one runs into me. At night. They were like failing. And then there were like people yeah, with illegal yeah. lights on too. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, I can't see. I literally had, at one point I had to like slam on the brakes and like wait till somebody went past me. Those were the worst road conditions I think I've ever driven in in my entire life. So, and there was no snow. And there was yeah, no there was no snow. snow. And then it was, the, and then the light wasn't even, like today it seemed normal, like a normal day. Like open the windows at 7.30 and you could see like the clouds and a little blue sky. I feel like everything prior to that, it's like nine o'clock in the morning and it was just super dark out there. And I'm like, oh my God. The winter's coming. Yeah, the winter's we gotta coming. get out. We gotta go. It's gotta time. Go. time. We're like the last bit of crazy yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Right? To still be up here. <laughs> it's time to go. This is above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah, this place is 10 out of 10. I turned more feral day by day. Just a plain peanut butter sandwich with some chocolate milk. Almond chocolate milk, that is. I think I'm starting to lose it. Yeah, that was another little obligatory stop that everybody does and should do. I had probably about a dozen people tell me to stop there on the way down on the Alaska Highway and let me tell you it was definitely worth it. It was a nice break in between the really long drive that we had. We also saw so many animals in the Northern Rockies. That is like one of the most underrated places for wildlife sightings. It, I'm definitely going back to the Northern Rockies besides the fact that there's some pretty amazing mountains out there that look like they would be fun to hike next summer maybe potentially. There's so many mountains there's so many hikes to go on so hopefully we can make it back out there but so then we did a little bit more driving that day to Fort Nelson but on the way to Fort Nelson I started to hear this really weird sound coming from the Jeep it sounded like a weird rattle rumble growl but it went away when we were in Fort Nelson so I was like okay not a big deal I said goodbye to Angie and Jackie there because they needed to make it down to the States in a couple days and I wanted to slow my pace down now we're on our own again. Me. <laughs> Hi, thank you. It was really good hanging out. Oh. It was so much fun. I'll see you down south. See you down south. And we're gonna use we're her gonna to do Tacoma. some science. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> follow her Yay. to see the rest of her journey. <laughs> you know, one thing I really am impressed by in these more northern Canadian communities is the rec centers. They're amazing. So I spent the day there doing some work and I went swimming. I don't think I got any footage of that, but uh, that's definitely something I've been taking advantage of here in Canada is the awesome rec centers that are super affordable. You can get a shower in, get a good exercise in, and yeah, it's wonderful. Then I made my way to Fort St. John and on the way the Jeep started making really weird sounds. <laughs> it was getting worse and worse and worse. And I was like, you know what? I should probably stop here. This is a main town and call a mechanic. We made it to the campsite. <laughs> Nothing special. Good for a night in the snow. Cause it's gonna snow tonight. Yeah, so that was kind of scary. <laughs> Driving with all those trucks. I was trying to drive slow because yeah, the sound was getting worse. I still have like 60 miles yet to the town, to the nearest town. So that's fun. 
Um, I have pretty much diagnosed that it's definitely either bearing something cyclical. The only thing that I know with my limited knowledge of cars is that something cyclical would be like, yeah, a bearing. So I don't know how that's possible because we changed out the bearings like not that long ago. Like when I got this Jeep rigged out, we noticed that the bearings were bad. So we changed those. I was driving it around this parking lot with the door open, trying to figure out where the sound was coming from. And it's definitely my front left wheel. Uh, yeah, I looked in there. Doesn't look like muddy. I cleaned, I washed it really well. I messed with all the joints and all the parts and wiggled them and <laughs> did what I can. So I don't know. We're going to have to go to the mechanic and yeah, they'll tell us what's going on. This is one of those days where I really wish that I had more automotive mechanical experience. That would really be helpful to be a little more self-reliant. The snow has caught up with us finally. We were running away from it ever since Tombstone. And now we can't escape it. It's snowed everywhere in Canada, pretty much. It's snowed everywhere. It doesn't matter how far south we go. It's gonna be snowy now. William, you don't know what you're in for. It's gonna be snowing when we go out there. William's got the zoomies. Come on. There's the Jeep. It's a snowstorm. I called like six places before I was able to find a place. I was able to stay in a hotel a couple nights, which was great because I've been living in the Jeep for three months straight now. Yeah, so I called the mechanic and tomorrow morning we're going to drop the Jeep off at the shop and he's going to take, they are going to take a look at it and tell me what's up. Hopefully it's not anything big, but it's definitely not safe to drive <laughs> a vehicle if there's a weird sound that is getting worse and worse. I think it's good to take a rest. It's the universe telling me, take a break, treat yourself to a hotel, uh, which thankfully it's pretty affordable here in this town for a pretty nice room. Um, so yeah, so yeah, we're just hanging it, hanging around. <laughs> it's kind of nice to just take a little break, take a load off, and especially since it was snowstorming those few days. It got 17 below Celsius and it was very cold, so I'm very lucky to have been able to stay at the hotel while I arranged uh, a booking with a mechanic. A couple days later, I was able to bring the Jeep in and they got me fixed up in four hours. It was one of the U-joints on my drive shaft. It was pretty corroded and they showed it to me. I didn't get it on camera, but it basically was ready to seize. It can really be detrimental to other parts of the Jeep uh, if you don't <laughs> fix your U-joints and it seizes while you're driving. Uh, the drive shaft can break off and basically puncture uh, other things <laughs> under your vehicle and so I was really glad that I stopped. It was definitely a big chunk of money but uh, I was really happy to have found a mechanic that could fit me in and get it done within four hours so after that we were on the road again. We stayed at a couple more places along the way to Hinton and, and then we spent the night at Walmart and then we drove through the ice fields the next day, which was fantastic. I didn't record a whole lot of it for YouTube, but if you're interested in seeing a little bit about it and what it looked like in the winter, go check out my Instagram, which is linked below if you want to see more real-time adventures and stuff that I don't post on YouTube. My stories is where I'm pretty unhinged. If you want to see that side of me, go check it out. Shameless plug. So we drove the ice fields and now we are just outside of Golden, BC. Yeah, it was quite a journey. I'm really glad though that I was able to break up the trip because <laughs> let me tell you, on the map it does not look very far, but once you drive it, it is an extremely long drive and I do not do well with long drives. Anything longer than like three or four hours is just a lot for me, so yeah, I'm really happy that I was able to break it up and if you ever travel on the Alaska Highway, I highly recommend breaking your trip up into smaller segments and enjoying the ride because, oh my gosh, 
this part of Canada is epic and so beautiful and I'm kind of in love with Canada and everybody is so friendly here. I've felt very safe on this portion of my drive down south. So that is an update of everything that has happened in the past couple weeks. <laughs> It has been a ride and I'm super happy to be in one spot now. We will be headed back to the States here in a week or so. And yeah, I'm gonna miss Canada a lot, but for now, today is gonna be a very beautiful sunny day. It's one of the warmest days we've had in a while, so we're gonna go geocaching today. So come along with us. The Canadian Rockies are thought to be formed when the North American continent was dragged westward during the closure of an ocean basin off the west coast and collided with a microcontinent over 100 million years ago. The whole Rocky Mountain range spans 4,800 kilometers or 3,000 miles and nearly 650 kilometers or 400 miles wide at the largest. There are over 50 peaks in the Canadian Rockies that reach over 11,000 feet or 3,350 meters. Mount Robson is the tallest mountain in the Canadian Rockies. Needless to say, there are some pretty awesome adventures that can be had here. So, I was supposing this video Halloween will be over, or Samhain as some people like to call it, and uh, yeah, so it's only fitting <laughs> that we do something haunted this week, something spooky. We're gonna try to hit up two geocache spots today. This first geocache spot is a haunted cabin, a banded haunted, haunted cabin, so we're going to try to find it today. It's not too far off of the road. Uh, I, geocaching is something I used to do uh, when I was probably in like middle school, early high school. Loved doing that with my mom and my brother. And recently I remembered that it was a thing. So <laughs> I think this will be fun. Uh, I'm a little nervous. I have a geocache, like I always am just afraid I'm gonna like end up on somebody's property that I didn't mean to end up on. So driving down this forest road and yeah let's see if we can find this thing well that was fairly simple although it looks like it's somebody's property i don't like that but it is cool it feels slightly like trespassing so i do not recommend uh, doing that so we are going to move on to the next one Giant paddle. Seriously would not have known this giant paddle was here. I didn't <laughs> do this. It's like frozen shut. Voila. Someone left band-aid. It's a notebook. Does anyone need a band-aid? <laughs> hmm. Believe something, but I don't know what. Last person was the 23rd of October, so like not even a week ago. And yeah, look at those mountains. People just live in this. It's so beautiful. Pause if you guys want to know why the heck there is a big paddle. After an hour of research, just to try to find another geocache that would be doable, we are going to go to a lookout. I think it's a fire lookout, and I think I have found a path there. So we're gonna do it, because why not? It's a beautiful day. Hello, sheep friends. Hello. If I don't find the geocache, at least I got to see you guys. Okay, I'll leave you alone. I don't wanna run over these dang dogs. Excuse me. Can run. It's still running. Go. <laughs> uh, Sunday. I hope there aren't any trucks on this road. That'd be friggin' scary. And the road doesn't look too bad. Whenever I do a trail that isn't super recorded, um, yeah, I always get really nervous. <laughs> but I try to push myself through it. It doesn't look too bad. If I needed to turn around, I could do like a 20-point turn. So. We're just gonna try to make our way as far up as we can. Maybe we'll make it to the top. I don't know. We'll just use our situational judgment. If it looks bad, we'll turn around. Easy enough. <laughs> okay, 
so it's 1.2 miles up this road. That is very narrow. And I'm a little nervous about doing it. There's two cars parked here. But that doesn't mean that they didn't, they were trying to go up there, hike up there. They probably went hunting. So I'm thinking about doing it. Oh. All right, so this is pretty frozen. All I know is the way back is not going to be easy, but we'll pull ourselves out if we have to. Y'all, so I don't know if I'm getting through this, honestly. I could go along here, but it would really be helpful to have somebody to spot me. Because this, if we know anything from the past, my tires do not do well in mud. And we have no idea how deep it is. Okay, so I turned around, turned the Jeep around. <laughs> that was a little bit precarious. It was a little scary. Currently in four low. Going down this. Woohoo. Yeehaw. Nice and slow down this slippery, bumpy road. Oof, y'all. I'm a bit exhausted after that. That was a little scary. Oh, yeah, and I need to take a second here, get myself together. I think I don't want to do the hike today. I'm tired. Something I'm learning about putting myself in more and more precarious situations is when I've reached my limit. All of the long hours driving that I've done in the past weeks really started to get to me in this moment, and I realized that I may have pushed myself too hard. I'm actually really sad I didn't make it to the lookout, but I think what I learned here is that it's 100% okay to turn around, especially when things don't feel safe and you're all alone. It is never a failure to put your safety first and to listen to yourself when you feel like you have reached your limit. We will be back to check this lookout out, and maybe then it'll also be warm enough to spend the night. So I hope I didn't disappoint everyone, but this is real life and I'm a real person and this is just exactly what happened that day. Sometimes I wonder like why can't I just have like a normal calm adventure? Like why can't I just like choose a nice easy dirt road to like a cute like mining cabin or something and then like hike not in bear country? <laughs> why am I like this? I like set off today to have an easy day and then what did I do? had kind of a more challenging day than I thought I would. But what matters is that we're down safe off of that mountain. And yeah, we're gonna eat dinner, hang out at this pretty little spot. I'm near Radium, cause tomorrow I'm going to the hot springs. Girl's gotta soak her bones tomorrow. And also shower really bad because it's been about a week since I've had a shower. Look at William's face right now. He's got, why are you side eyeing me, dude? <laughs> he's sniffing in the fire pit and now he's got charcoal. <laughs> You sweet boy. You're so cute. You're so silly. Boiling water also doubles as a steam fish. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. How long do you guys think it'll take before I get sick of cooking on this little pocket rocket stove? <laughs> Sometimes I'm over it, but then I make something delicious on it and I'm like, eh, it's fine. It's all I need. It's small. It's compact. It works. I don't know, it would be, I can cook on the fire too, so it's like, I don't know. Do I really need it? Sometimes less is more. Mm, Monacado. Desperado.